Good morning. I'm George Woolley. Welcome to the other side. Today I have Georgios Papanikolaou. Uh, I may have not got the name right, but we'll, we'll make, make a go at it. Um, he is the Consul General for Greece in, uh, in Texas, and we'll go into which areas he covers. Um, he, uh, he came to Houston in 2011. Um, he studied international relations uh, and international economy at the University of Macedonia uh, and at the University of Nice, France, uh, and has completed studies with the MA in International Economic and Monetary Relations from the American University and uh, Georgetown University, Washington, D.C. Uh, my daughter graduated from Georgetown also, just to put a plug in there. Um, uh, work experience, he's uh, been a marketing consultant first, uh, then joined the Greek Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and then Deputy Head of Mission and Consul at the Embassy of Greece in Baku, Azerbaijan. Um, welcome. Uh, happy to have Good you here. George. And, My pleasure. Uh, and uh, thank, thank, you for for, thank you for taking the time to come here. I know you have a busy schedule, and I know you have to get out of here quickly. Uh, but we're going to detain you for a little while uh, to talk about something that's exciting and what's happening in Greece. Um, so let's start about, well, before I get there, um, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Greek father. I, I love the Greek philosophy, and I, I am a philosophy grad. And one of the things that always stuck in my head is what Alfred Whitehead, the famous philosopher mathematician, said that the Western civilization is but a footnote to Aristotle and Plato. That's what he said. And then, you know, so, so you from that famous, you know, descendant of, of that famous history. All right, now we have a young, uh, daring, risk taking. Uh, Prime Minister, who's, who's taken one his election again, Tsipras. Um, so tell us a little bit about how this happened and how it came about. Well, he's young in age, but he's not so young in politics. Yes. Uh, Prime uh -huh. Minister Tsipras has been in politics, and he has been with a left-wing party for more than 15 years. Mm -hmm. Now, he has been leading the party for the last uh, 10 years, and especially the last five years, which were pretty complex in terms of, you know, the political ramifications of the, of the crisis Greece is facing. Um, uh, Mr. Tsipras was elected first time in 2015, January 2015, mm -hmm. at the general elections uh, with uh, a considerable majority. He got 37% uh, of the votes. Okay. Uh, but this did not give him the absolute majority in the parliament, mm -hmm. just for one vote. So he had to uh, align uh, with uh, a right-wing party, mm -hmm. uh, the independent Greeks. They formed a government, yes. which stay in power uh, just for seven months, mm -hmm. uh, trying to negotiate a better deal in terms of the economic uh, recipes that have been uh, implemented in Greece for the last five so years. So that was precipitated by, of course, the debt crisis. Of course. Yes, and, and, uh, and so will, will the debt crisis uh, continue to haunt him? Would he be able to sell the austerity programs and the plans to the Greek people? You know, it's difficult to sell any kind of austerity measures yeah. anywhere in the world. Right. Uh, and especially in Greece, where we have been living, we have been suffering from austerity for the last six years. It's very hard to say, okay, we have three or four more years of austerity. Tell us about the austerity. What, what, are, what is this austerity that Greece is under right now? Well, austerity means that the country at a certain point, and that was back in 2010, mm -hmm. uh, was spending more uh, than it was producing, mm -hmm. uh, spending more than revenues, with a huge trade deficit, with a huge budget deficit. Mm -hmm. Greece found itself suddenly out of cut off, totally cut off uh, the international markets. Mm -hmm. uh, so the only resort we had is uh, uh, either to default mm -hmm. or ask for uh, help from our partners, from our creditors inside the Eurozone. Uh, we got a first bailout package, which was uh, enormous for the, uh, for the world economic let me, standards. Let me take you back a little bit mm -hmm. then. 
what what's the Greek economy like? What 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 do you produce? What do you sell? What do you export? How is how is the Greek economy set up? Well, the main uh, the sector which accounts uh, most of our GDP is tourism, accounting for eighteen percent. Uh, maritime also accounts for almost uh, 16 percent. Mm -hmm. The agricultural sector is close to 3 percent and the rest of it is just services. Service, okay. Uh, mm -hmm. The industrial sector, which is critical for every economy, has been minimized uh, significantly. And why did that happen? 20 years. I think it was a result of the nature of capitalism and of the um, the liberation of uh, capital and goods within the European zone that... You like know, we've had here in the United exactly, States, which right? Mm -hmm. made the cost of trade transactions almost zero. So it was very easy for people to develop services, uh, to exchange uh, goods and services. And, and this also, this consequently gained a very good uh, share of our economic But then, activity. you know, Greek famously has some of the great ports. It's, it's right on the Mediterranean. It, it's, 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 it, it, you know, look at Singapore, it's a little country. Mm -hmm. Look what they have done with that. Why has not Greek Greece uh, gone that way? No, it has gone as far as port is concerned. It has gone. We Piraeus, which is right outside Athens, is one of the biggest ports in the Mediterranean. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very popular and very critical uh, for the uh, transfer of goods uh, in the in the area and Piraeus port has gone extremely well. Uh, it has gone so well that the Chinese have decided to make a big investment in that port. Actually, they have uh, uh, invested heavily and they're interested in investing more. So, in terms of uh, the contribution of the port, uh, we're very satisfied. Okay. Uh, so let's get back to the the debt. How did that come about, and and and, and how it it then affected the election and all of that. So let's talk about the debt. How, how did that debt accumulate? Now it's about, what, $90 billion? Uh, the debt is now $340 billion. Okay, all right. Which is uh, uh, almost 180% uh, of our GDP. Our GDP is approximately $170 billion right now. Okay. This is in euros, yes. of course. So the, the figures are uh, more in, in dollars, if yes. you multiply. Yes, the exchange rate. I would say that um, the Greece followed a really distorted economic model mm -hmm. during the last decade. Mm -hmm. The one emphasizing on consumption, mm -hmm. uh, rather on savings, or rather on production. Mm -hmm. uh, the cheap lending that we enjoyed due to our integration into the Eurozone uh, made Greece a very low risk country to invest and to do business with. So at a certain point we found ourselves having the same interest rate as Germany. Mm -hmm. It was very easy for households and for businesses to borrow. Uh, but instead of channeling all this money into productive sectors to modernize the economy, to um, modernize uh, factories, uh, 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 our agricultural sector and so on, uh, households and businesses uh, engaged in uh, spending. Mm -hmm. um, and therefore, we, the country started to run a huge budget deficit. So on top of that, we had very poor political management by the politicians who saw this, uh, uh, this opportunity, uh, saw this as an opportunity to satisfy their electoral clientele. Mm -hmm. So uh, they started spending money, uh, the government I mean, started spending money uh, to a point that we started running a budget deficit of 15.9 percent. Now I also heard, read somewhere that, uh, that there was corruption in the government and some of the deficit problems were caused by some corruption issues. Is that well? This is true. I mean, where there's money, there is corruption. Right. Corruption is okay. not the Greek phenomenon. Right. It exists right. everywhere. Uh -huh. But sometimes it is accentuated by an abundance of money that is circulated in the economy. So uh, Greece is, of course, you know, part of the of uh, of corruption. It has been corruption. Yes, so this is okay. true. Okay. So 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 we have had a debt crisis. Obviously, that came to a head. Your, your, the Greece owed money to uh, several banks, you know, mm -hmm. German banks and so forth and so on. And the EU then started putting pressure on, on Greece for austerity measures mm -hmm. and those measures went into effect and then the, the previous government collapsed, right? And then uh, Cyprus became prime minister in general. governments in plural. Okay, it's, it's in plural. Only, only that's right, well, they, they, were, they, they were a coalition. 
And then Tsipras came in with a fair amount of, uh, uh, you know, uh, mandate in the first time in January, mm -hmm. when he became uh, prime minister mm -hmm. uh, at the age of 40. 40. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Uh, and then he came in and he looked at the well and said, "Woo, this well is deep." And and he then turned around and and started negotiating, but the negotiations didn't go that well with uh, with the EU. Well, Prime Minister, did it? You know, Prime Minister had a very ambitious and a legitimate plan. Mm -hmm. He wanted to change the agenda mm -hmm. uh, and the strategy, mm -hmm. uh, and he wanted to change the terms uh, for Greece. Yes. So he started negotiating, but it was not easy. Uh, against, we were standing alone against 18 other Eurozone members. Mm -hmm. So um, at the very end, facing the, uh, the uh, eventuality of a new uh, default, mm -hmm. we had, I would say, we had to compromise. And we have to come down to earth and we rea to realize that um, austerity, I would say a little more austerity is what is needed right now, uh, and more effort what is needed right now in order to come out of this uh, situation. So, so you think the austerity levels, uh, is there a sort of a sort of a flow on this? Can you, how far down can you go on the austerity? And how much would the people be willing to swallow? I think people are, they had enough, uh, mm. fed off with uh, austerity, but uh, there's always room for more austerity. As long as there are people, yeah. <laughs> uh, there's also, uh, as long as people right. who are alive, there's more room for austerity. Now, uh, the, the, the reason I ask that question is, is, is uh, can the Greek economy move in some other direction to be able to, to produce more? Is, is there any effort in that direction instead of just going the austerity uh, you know, the, just kind of setting our austerity programs. I think there's one simple direction which we implement also in our households. You need to produce and you need to have more revenues than uh, what you spent. Mm -hmm. So once we get into this point to have more money, more money from revenues, from investment, mm -hmm. this is where we can say, okay, now we can pay our bills and we have some extra money to pay for interest rates, to pay our lenders and to dedicate some of these funds in order to protect the weaker layers of the society which have been suffering. So his, his gamble worked. I mean, he resigned, uh, went back and went to the people, and uh, he got what? Uh, how many seats? 30, uh, 145 seats. 145 seats. That's with the bonus 55. In the part, uh, yeah, that, this is with the bonus one. according yeah. to the electoral uh -huh. law. Right. Which gives him the, um, the um, uh, relative majority in the parliament. Right. And then he has the 10 from the uh, right wing. He aligned right? with uh, the previous uh, allies. Allies, yeah. Previous, uh, seven now, why would a right wing uh, party coalesce with, with a left wing party? Mm -hmm. To, to, to wanting to govern the country. How, do, how does that happen? Yeah, it sounds a little bit paradox, uh, but what is happening is that both parties have uh, come down and have decided on very critical issues, which is first corruption, uh, and, and th then honesty, corruption, and um, uh, a better future for the uh, younger people. Mm -hmm. So these are two fields where they agree on, and they decided to march together. Consul, hold that thought. We'll be back. We'll t take a break and we'll be back to talking to you about the refugee situation in, in Europe and in Greece. Um, we're talking to uh, Georgios Papadikolov, the Consul General of Greece in Texas. On the other side, we interview a variety of people and seek to examine their beliefs, their opinions, and their passions. Then we invite them to come with us to the other side and look at the antithesis of their views. What comes out is an in-depth conversation without the vitriol of the talk shows, but a cerebral engaging of ideas you will not find anywhere else. Come join us on alternate Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. on this channel. If you'd like to recommend a guest for the other side, contact us at the email address on the screen. Welcome back. We're talking to Consul Papanikolaou, um, the Consul General uh, of Greece to uh, our region here in Texas. Um, we were talking to him in the, in the previous segment about uh, the election and the politics of Greece. 
Well, if you thought they had a problem with the debt crisis, wait a minute, and you, we'll show you what the next crisis they're facing. And that is the refugee crisis. So let's talk about the refugee crisis. What is the crisis? Well, I guess it's a very complex humanitarian issue that has come up uh, during the last two years, mm -hmm. uh, which is basically uh, an, uh, a displacement of people of unprecedented magnitude mm -hmm. from uh, places like Syria, mainly from Syria, mm -hmm. from places like uh, Afghanistan, yes. Pakistan, uh, Libya, mm -hmm. uh, Eritrea, and uh, the rest of the uh, African countries where the living conditions are deteriorating. So now from Syria, for them to get to Greece, they have to go through Turkey, right? Correct. Correct. So, th so, so they don't want to stay in Turkey. Is that why are they why are they coming all the way to Greece? Because they have Greece is a transit country. Right. Uh, their main destination is usually the northern European countries where mm -hmm. asylum process is easier and where they have relatives and where job opportunities exist. Okay. But but t Turkey is a relatively good economy. Why wouldn't they stop there? Why would they continue on to Greece? Uh, they are at the borders, right. the southern Turkey-Syrian borders, uh -huh. and I would say that the living conditions there are not even decent. Mm -hmm. So as I said, they take the risk to travel all these miles mm -hmm. dangerously mm -hmm. in order to find a better future for themselves and for their families. So just to put it in perspective, what is the distance between Syria and Greece? I don't know the exact uh, length, but it's not only the land trip. It's also a very dangerous water. water trip that they have to do in the middle of the night mm -hmm. in uh, very unsafe uh, conditions. Okay. Uh, so, they, so, so, so they get there uh, and some of them don't make it, right? Correct. So you, then they're coming from Syria. Now, there are also folks that are coming from Afghanistan also. I would say that 75 of the immigration we've been having for the last two years comes from Syria because of the, mm -hmm. of the, of the issue, war, right. uh -huh. uh, but also there are economic Im immigrants from uh, Afghanistan, mm -hmm. Pakistan, and Iraq. Iraq, okay. I guess, is a mix of economic immigration and fleeing from, from the war which is mm -hmm. already, uh, which is existing, still existing. So again, Afghanis would have to go, you know, through Iran to Turkey and then come to Greece. I would assume that. Wow, that's that's a big distance mm -hmm. and, and what perils they face along the way. And with young children, women, it's, it's, it's a real crisis. I think right? anyone, anyone can imagine. Yes, so, all right, so then they cross that and they come to Greece. Mm -hmm. Then what happens there? And, and first of all, let's talk about numbers. How many, how many folks have come to Greece so far? Well, I have the numbers here in front of me. Mm -hmm. um, 500,000 people have made their way to Europe since the beginning of this year. So half of them uh, have been uh, through, through Greece, mm -hmm. more than 250,000. Um, and there are also other affected countries like Italy, uh, Hungary, uh, Malta, mm -hmm. but Greece is taking the biggest, the biggest portion mm -hmm. since, mm -hmm. since it sits in the middle of their passage to the European Union. So they, when they arrive in Greece, let's say 500,000 people, what, is, what does Greece do initially? How do they handle that situation? We have to follow the regulations that have been agreed by the European Union. That means we try to welcome them, we have first reception centers, mm -hmm. uh, we uh, fingerprint them, we identify them, mm -hmm. We register them, and then they are free to circulate. Some of them uh, might apply for asylum. Mm -hmm. Some of them choose not to apply in Greece, but to move into a different More country okay. where the asylum process is easier and faster. Uh, but in any case, since the Schengen area is uh, a free area without borders, they are free to circulate within this area. Mm -hmm. That is why they come to Greece uh, as a first entry. Mm -hmm. And that is why then they are free to they are free to continue their trip further on. So, in spite of uh, enormous crisis that Greece is facing, you still welcome them, do what you do, and, and follow follow what the EU has uh, set out as as a protocol to handle these folks. Well, I'm proud to say that the Greeks, despite these financial difficulties, have showed enormous. 
uh, tolerance and, and tolerance. incredible signs of support yes. uh, for all these people. I think Unfortunately, we, we do not have the luxury and the means yes. right now to accommodate everyone right. and to offer them, uh, you know, decent living standards. And then it's a, I'm sure, uh, I think uh, uh, you should be proud of that. Uh, we are, to a certain so, extent, to so, extent. So, but so, we try think. also to comply with the rules that have been agreed right. on the European level. Because as human beings, we, we're going to have to take Absolutely. care of other human beings. Absolutely. That's that's the only thing that's left. That's the only thing that defines us, right? So, all right. Now, <clears throat> the type of people that come, that have left these countries and come, how, what, 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 what kind of people are these? Well, they're mainly everyday people who had to flee the war in Syria. Mm -hmm. And there are some say that only the, 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 the rich, the wealthy, leave their countries. They are the ones that are able to pay whatever fees that are needed to cross the, cross the large mm -hmm. land and see uh, expenses that they, they cross to get to mm -hmm. Greece. Uh, if, do you see that happening? Are these folks who come there, do they have money? Do, are, they, are they the wealthy folk? Well, the information we have is that from, there are people from all uh, layers of the society. There were people who saved money in order to make this trip. There are more wealthy people who have decided to uh, seek their fortune into Europe. I wouldn't categorize them between rich and poor for, for us and for every European state, I would say. These are people that need to be treated with, uh, with uh, respect. Now, obviously, I think the elephant in the room is that people sometimes fear that these folks that are coming from Syria and from Afghanistan, whether they are also bringing terrorism with them. How, how does uh, EU or Greece, for that matter, deal with that, that, that problem? This is true. There is a fear. That's why our duty, uh, officer's duty, is to uh, register them, uh, fingerprint them, make sure that these are not listed into any uh, kind of black uh, list, uh, which has been signaled by international police, uh, Europol, and so on, for illegal activities before. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, there are little things to do. Once they get this paper from the Greek authorities, they are free to travel around. And um, usually this is a fear that we cannot really eliminate mm -hmm. uh, right now. Now, obviously, the borders, German borders, the Austrian border, the Hungarian borders are being closed, uh, at least as of last week when I checked the news. Uh, they are closing those borders. Temporarily. Is it temporary? Is it temporarily, okay. according to the treaty, the Schengen Treaty, mm -hmm. it cannot exceed 10 days. Okay. And mm -hmm. then after that, what, what will happen to these folks? Well, these folks, as I said before, they are trying to uh, pass on to countries like Germany or Sweden or Finland mm -hmm. where mm -hmm. Uh, their demands will uh, No, Angel, be Angela Mer Merkel said she'll take about 160,000. This is what she said initially. Yes. Um, I have not followed lately the mm -hmm. announcements by the German government, mm -hmm. but I'm afraid that there has been a swift a, a switch from in, that number from, from, uh -huh. from that policy mm -hmm. uh, to a more skeptical uh, approach. Okay. This this is how we explain also the closure of the borders, right. the Austrian-German borders, okay. I think, due to internal, I don't want to get into German politics, but I understand that also they need to accommodate the anxiety yes. and the, the, the legitimate the concerns of, of, their citizens, of, Germany, right, right. of their citizens. That's why they introduced this temporary control, which are totally justified by the sanctions. So, so, so what they're going to do then, I guess, is while they're outside the border, they're going to be interviewed, they're going to be checked, they're going to be, uh, they're going to determine if these folks qualify as, as refugees. Now, what will happen ultimately, let's say this, this flow continues. Now, you said 500,000 have already come through. Since January. Since January. And then, then this number keeps increasing to another million or whatever. How will, how will Europe handle this? this situation? This is a tough problem. This is a complex situation. And uh, so far, European Union has been uh, treating the symptoms, mm -hmm. uh, dealing with the symptoms that mm -hmm. has not been treating the causes. And the causes of this, uh, the roots of this uh, problem mm -hmm. uh, lie in the countries themselves. Countries themselves. So, so is there, is there action, a is there not a take action in yeah. order to improve their living conditions, in order to terminate the war in Syria, mm -hmm. uh, fina help financially Afghanistan, Pakistan, uh, restore confidence in those citizens, they will keep coming to us.
So how are we going to do that? How are we going to go back and assist these folks in trying to keep the people there? I think this is something that needs a concerted action from the entire international community. And I'm very, I'm very happy to see that the entire community, the entire international community has been mobilized. Uh, we will have, we'll be having very soon an uh, EU Council for Heads of State meeting in the European Union uh, this week. Uh, later we have a United Nations uh, Heads of State meeting uh, about immigration as well. In November, we have a new meeting with African countries trying to see how we can create synergies mm -hmm. in order to improve the situation in those countries. We're also working on a program of resettlement. Mm -hmm. Some of these people can apply for asylum while they were in, the, in, this, in those countries so they do not endanger their lives right. in the trip. So there's a lot of things that should be done at the same time. But what not, would a, not what by a, only single actor. What would a model look like uh, you know, when we were talking about uh, assisting these countries like Syria and, and Afghanistan, wherever these refugees are coming from. Um, what would a sort of a model look like to try and assist these folks so that people don't leave these countries? What will it look like? You're talking specifically about Syria? Okay, or let's talk about Syria. Uh, well, Syria is a more complex situation. Yeah. Um, uh, it, it is subject of, you know, um, further consultation, mm -hmm. negotiation between not only the European partners, but also Russia, uh, which has, uh, uh, has played an active role. They still have a leverage on Assad regime and the United States, of course, European partners, uh, Saudi Arabia, the neighboring countries, and so on, in order to see how we can terminate the war, how we can create safe zones where the people can stay there uh, until waiting for the war to finish, or how they can formulate their demands for asylum or for displacement into Europe without living under the fear of the war. So the, the, the refugee crisis is obviously at its peak now, uh, and, and Europeans have done well, uh, including Greece, in, in handling this matter. It's, it's been a great, uh, I, think, I think the world is, is now seeing a different side of human humanity, because uh, one particular scene uh, when these refugees came into, into uh, Austria, Mm -hmm. uh, there was this welcoming group that had water, food. Mm -hmm. Well, this uh, happens it was, everywhere. It, it, you know, it, it was, I, at least I saw only the, the, mm -hmm. the Austrian one. And let me tell you, I was moved to tears looking at that. And, and, uh, you know, ho and hopefully we are going to take some refugees here. Uh, Secretary Kerry said uh, we were going to take at least about 80,000 uh, from that region. So I guess that hopefully will help. Uh, I think we can do better than that, but but that's what uh, Secretary Kerry said. It's a good start. <laughs> it's a good start, at least. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming. I absolutely enjoyed uh, this discussion, and hopefully we'll do this again. I hope so. Uh, thank you. Thank for you. Me. And uh, well, uh, you heard uh, uh, Consul Papa Nicola uh, today with us on the other side, and uh, please join us next time on the other side.